see it. So yeah, I'm tapping it. Not much is happening. I feel pretty positive, maybe. <laughs> everyone. I'm here with Robert Menelson. We met here on LinkedIn and uh, I've just been having such a great time getting to know one another. He works in powerful play experiences and we have had such great conversations. I thought I would interview him and share some of our conversation with you. Uh, and so um, I just, I'm just really happy to see you again, Robert, and I hope you're having as great a day as I am here in Montreal. Well, it, every day is a great day when you hang out with Monique. <laughs> so sweet. If you're watching this video and you are on LinkedIn and you haven't yet connected with Monique, I think something needs to change. <laughs> oh, you're so sweet. It's been yeah. really fun. And you know, and I just love the exchanges that we've had. And so I'm going to be clip cutting up this piece. So for the next couple of minutes, just watch some of the things that we've talked about, Robert and I. Please, uh, at the end, comment, uh, like our video, share it, go out there and share the positive message of play and its impact on your mental health, your team's mental health, and you as a leader. Um, so let's get right into it, okay? I love that interview you did with the woman where she said, you, you know, and you said, I didn't own the mental health issue. I, I saw myself as a facilitator, but I didn't, I didn't acknowledge it in myself. And then when I started to, and I started making it a part of me, all of a sudden I got more creative yeah. like, just because you, you know, so your mental health improved by reducing the stigma. I found that so powerful mm. as a concept. And I know for me too, that's, you know, an issue, you know, I used to work in, in mental health as you know, as a counselor. And if you showed any signs of feeling like having like depression or anxiety or anything, the counselors were the worst ones. They, they would self-stigmatize, so they didn't allow anyone to know that they were struggling. So when I openly struggled and said so, they had a really hard time with the stigma, and I was really surprised. And so even mental health workers don't know that. Okay. <laughs> so let me, ask, let me just ask you a question. Let me just well, I, just, I want to know more about... Not yet, because you're informing me. <laughs> I'm taking notes. I've only heard... You're the only... You're the second person to say self-stigmatize. Yeah. At, and I didn't have an opportunity with the first individual to ask them. Okay. Would why. you like to talk about that for a while? Well, I'd like, yeah. Well, I'm interested in it because you said you saw in the video that um, I was being honest. I was owning it. And through that, I was growing. Uh, uh, and you said it, it was nice to see you not self-stigmatize. Yeah. And so I, I'm... I'm just having, just asking, so what does that mean? Right. Well, in the video, when you talked about what you used to do and not want to talk about it, yeah. and that the fact that you do talk about it is what really humanizes you, but it's because you had stopped self-stigmatizing that you became the real you. And the real you is this playful, because you're not containing yourself anymore. Yeah. So that's what I meant by, I'm glad to, you know, I really find that is a topic we don't talk about enough about, you know, we talk about Bell Let's Talk Day and don't stigmatize people and anti-stigma and all that. But the biggest people, the biggest uh, people who do this are people who self-stigmatize because when we self-stigmatize, we're in denial uh, or we are containing we don't want people to know, you know, like that we're not, we can't be authentic if we're always hiding a big part of ourselves. Very much in the same way as people coming out of the closet for being gay. They never felt completely themselves until they could just say, oh yeah, so that when I have a bad day, it's because my depression kicks in. Or when I'm having a bad day, it's because I miss my, my same sex lover. You know, it's the same, we get to just be, have that moment of bleh, and then we get to move on. Okay, okay, I understand. Right. Wow, that's poof. <laughs> 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 no, I didn't, I, you know, I, I never, you're, like I said, you're just the second person to ever use that term with me. Yeah, yeah, I think it needs to be part of, you could even make it part of your mental health talks about, because I think it's very powerful. 
Wow. Like, and, and, and that event that I attended, the Bell Let's Talk Day event here in Edmonton, mm -hmm. uh, and presented a, a short, you know, Powerful Play Experiences workshop, everything was about what the community needs to do differently, differently okay. to, to, to address mental health. But no one talked about that. No one talked about what we need to do for ourselves first, and how dare we expect the community, the world, to not be dismissive, to not show an understanding. If we ourselves go along our journey every day, um, um, containing it and finding and, You know, I love Bella's talk because it teaches people to to start talking about like there's a, a line of communication but, but it's funny the bell let's talk should be about us yeah and that's the thing that i always found was missing really was, was that um when you know we need to really to be empathetic to people who have mental illness we need to really be aware of our own mental illnesses or our mental struggles and uh and we all have them and what are you doing about it? How are you managing that? How are you, you know, are you containing it? Are you dismissing it? Exactly. That's, and that's not, that's not a, that's not an idea. That's rocket science here. This is before, before I can be better, before I can be the best that I can be for you, I need the best that I can be for me. Is so man, you just, you, my mind is going poof right now because <laughs> The Bell Let's Talk Day is sending a message to community to say, you need to talk about this thing that's over here that we are. It's, the Bell Let's Talk is never referenced back to us. Yeah. That, you know, like when we aren't being honest with ourselves, we can't play. We can't expand. We're just like just doing everything to contain it instead of just being owning it and being free with it and then we can really grow you know and it's that they they traumatize themselves unnecessarily by not saying i need to let go of some of my belief system and i need to start just being who i am <laughs> okay so thanks everyone for joining us on this uh, little chit chat that robert and i had if you have any questions for either of us uh i'm located in montreal robert is located in uh, Edmonton, Alberta. Woo! <laughs> and uh, we travel all across Canada. We're happy to come and help your teens learn to laugh together, play together, and just have a more positive mental outlook. Take good care of yourselves, everyone. Thank bye you. Now. Bye. Bye. <laughs>